I'm going through my channel and um, um, just to see if I'm getting views or anything like that. And it's you know stagnant. It's not really, <laughs> it's not really going anywhere. But that's cool. Um, I expect that. Uh, I I I stumbled upon my um my video that I did about Job being Melchizedek, and uh, yeah, he definitely is Melchizedek. Um, and um, but the reason why I paid attention to it was because it has seventy three views and. Seven and three are my not favorite numbers. Well, actually, three and seven in that order. But, uh, yeah, so I watched the video back. So watch that video. This is a good way to refer to that video. So let me not make this video too long. But while you're watching, while you are watching that, keep in mind that, again, the phrase that Paul used in Greek, um, without father and without mother, without beginning of days, and without end of days and without genealogy. That is an idiom. That is an idiom, people. Just do research on that because I don't want to make this video too long. But that's an idiom. It's just like how we'll say it's raining cats and dogs today. But how foolish would someone in the future be to take that expression literally? Right? It would be the same foolishness for someone to take it literally what Paul is saying. Just a, just a quick side note for you to understand. Abraham, Abraham knew Job. He knew him. Um, I mean, Abraham knew Melchizedek. Ab he is Job, but Abraham knew Melchizedek. Melchizedek wasn't someone who was not living on earth who came to meet Abraham. Think, people. Because even the very next verse, Paul, or the next three verses after that, this is Hebrews 7 verse 3. Paul says this. But like in Hebrews 7 verse 4, 5, or 6, Paul says, Look how great this Melchizedek was. So much so that Abraham gave him a tenth of everything he had. Meaning, Abraham, Abraham knew how wealthy this Melchizedek was. And we know from the account of Job and all the arguments I already made in my last video about it. So go to that video. I'm not going to repeat it here. Job was a great, great, rich man, people, okay? And his territory expanded far. So for, so this was a human living on earth who lived in the land of Salem, which is Jerusalem at the time that Job is alive. Salem, he lived in that land, but it's called Salem at this time, not Jerusalem, but it's the same land. Just as time goes on, it becomes a different name. Think, people, just read the account where in, in Hebrews 7 and the expression without beginning of days, without end of life, without father or mother. That's that is that was a, that was an idiom used at the time of Paul and during the first century and even a little bit before then of people who were born, who had no birth record, who had no record of their birth. Right now, is Paul saying this because they were looking for the birth record of Melchizedek and they couldn't find it? That's why he said that. No, he's saying it because based on the written account, based on the Bible, this Melchizedek, this Job is important enough to have a whole book written about him. The book of Job, his trials that God said, have you set? Your eyes upon my servant Job that there is no one like him in the earth. And then Satan is like, yeah, you've blessed him tremendously. So much so that even Abraham is going to know him. At this point in time, Abraham is not born yet. Okay, so Job can be declared as the most righteous. Abraham is not born yet. Again, this is a second argument that I gave about the time span proof that Job, this is about Job. Okay, so he's this wealthy. He, and he's so important that a whole book is written about him. But no mention about his father. No mention about his mother. No mention about how he was born or how he died or when he was born or when he died. So this fits perfectly the idiom that Paul is talking about. 
that this Melchizedek was without father or mother, without beginning of days, without end of life, and without genealogy, right? Now check this out. Job has no written record of his... So if Paul is alluding to this Job, and he's basically going off of the written account, which the Bible is about, the Bible, so and Paul always refers to the Bible, the Old Testament, so he's referring to this Job, right? But he also knows, he's also privy that Job had another name, which is Melchizedek. But without genealogy, we know that Job had many children. He had many sons and he had many daughters before those sons and daughters died, but no mention about their names. We know that after his trial, God gave him more children, but sons and daughters, but no mention of his sons and no mention of his daughters. Okay, fine. They don't need to, right? But check this out. No mention of his sons, but there are mentions of his daughters. This is this is this does not happen in the Bible. This does not happen for a man to have sons, but his sons are not mentioned. The name of his sons are not mentioned, but yet the names of his daughters are mentioned. And why? Because they were extremely beautiful. They were the most beautiful women in the land, which is a, which is actually a credit to Job because daughters typically resemble their fathers in a weird way. So if your daughters are beautiful, it means you who fathered them are a handsome man. So that's kind of like you can see the blessing that God is giving him in that sense. Right. Um, so without genealogy. So now we can never trace who the descendants of Job are because the Bible intentionally leaves out the names of his sons, but it mentions the names of his daughters. <laughs> right. And when you come to realize the fact that without beginning of days, without end of life, without, um, um, without father and mother, without beginning of days, without beginning of life, without genealogy, thus his priesthood continues perpetually. You understand? It's like, it's like, it's, it's like, because there's no written record, it's almost like his children were not his son specifically, were not as righteous as him. So, so as not to not contaminate his like legacy they are not mentioned because how can they really measure up to Job? You know what I'm saying? Someone so great as Job. Now, if you don't believe me, just listen to the arguments that I make in the video about Job, which is about probably like 15 videos before this one. Just go to my, you know, um, what is it I want to mention? You see how Elijah was born, but no record about how he was, who his father or who his mother is. We don't know when he was born or how he was born or when he died. Quick thing, some people think that when when Elijah went in the chariot and went to the heavens or wherever God took him, that he was lost like God took Enoch. No, in, in further, if you keep reading in the Old Testament, um, I don't remember which book exactly. But Elijah is mentioned again. And Elijah writes a letter to one of the kings and it says that it is from Elijah. And this is after he went up in the, in the um, fiery chariot when Eli Elisha took his, his place. So this means that Elijah did come back to the earth. That's a side note for you. But this video is not about that. But anyway, the reason why I'm mentioning him is because he is that expression that Paul used for Job. You say Melchizedek. That's also him. People can have two separate names, three separate titles, even. Um, Solomon was called also Dedediah, which means beloved by Yah. Okay, so if someone in the in the New Testament says that Dedediah had multiple wives and he went crazy, you would say, oh, that doesn't mean any, that's not referring to anybody in the Old Testament. Actually, it's referring to Solomon. That's just an example I'm giving. But um, so that expression that Paul used about without father, without mother, without beginning of days, without end of life, and without genealogy, this idiom fits Elijah too. But it doesn't mean that Elijah was not a man living on earth. No, he was a man living on earth. But that idiom applies to him. Not literally, idiomatically. <laughs> okay, that idiom 
If you want to say Job is not Melchizedek, well, you still have to agree that that idiom fits perfectly with the account of Job. Someone so rich, someone so important as Job to have a book named after him and his life story talked about, but yet the people who brought him into the earth are not mentioned. His descendants are not mentioned. His sons even are not mentioned, but the names of his daughters almost to let you know that we're doing this intentionally. We're intentionally not telling you the names of his sons, but we are telling you the names of his daughters so that you will know that when he is referred to in the future, you won't get it twisted and think that it's somebody who didn't live on the earth. Again, when you read what how Paul writes it, this Abraham knew, knew Melchizedek. And then, and then um, Paul says, see how great this Melchizedek was. So that Abraham gave him a tenth, meaning Abraham was privy to how great he was. But Abraham, if think about it, if, if Melchizedek was not someone who was on the earth, wouldn't Abraham go a little crazy, like like even more crazy? I mean, remember, Abraham knew God. Abraham knew God. He spoke with God. He would have visions from God. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't know God. You know what I'm saying? Like he understood that God was El Shaddai. And that I, did, I made a different video about where when God spoke with Moses and he said, as regards the, the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, by my name, I did not make myself known to them, but I made myself known to them as El Shaddai. I made a video on this. You mis you misinterpret this. God has shown me a lot of things. You misinterpret that. Because Abraham didn't Abraham name the mountain Yehovah Yireh, meaning in the mountain of Yehovah, Yehovah will provide. So if God is telling Moses that they didn't know his name, that by his name Yehovah they did not know he did not make himself known to them, then why did Abraham know the name Yehovah? He, God is talking about the name, the character, the 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 powerful, the powerful act in which he can deliver, like he did with, like he was about to do with Moses to save the nation of Israel from Egypt, that with a, with a strong, mighty hand, because that's that's what part of the character of God. Abraham did not know God by that name. I did a video on this, but anyway, um, so Abraham is he knows about God, but this Melchizedek. If Melchizedek is Christ, <laughs> and why am I the only one who sees this? If Melchizedek is Christ, Abraham would not be as casual as he is in his relationship with him. And Paul would not be as casual about saying, see how great this Melchizedek was. So even so that Abraham gave him a tenth of everything he had. Well, if Melchizedek was a very enigmatic person who literally had no father and mother. What's the point of saying, well, see how great this Melchizedek was so that Abraham gave him? Well, of course Abraham would do that because the man is like no other man on earth. So of course he would. Of course someone would do that to somebody who was not born but has just been, was literally without father and mother and literally without beginning of days and literally without end of life. Of course he would do it. But no. We're not saying that literally. We're just saying that there's no written record about him, you know, but he was a real person living in the land of Salem. But even though he was a real person living in the land of Salem, look how great he was so that even the patriarch Abraham gave him a tenth of everything he had. And then Paul continues to say that even though he didn't come from the lineage of Abraham, he was a priest. Exactly. That's a point I make about Job. Job was a priest. He was a priest, so watch that other video. I'm going to end it now, so the video's not too long. Peace. Oh, and by the way, while I'm at it, um, since I'm talking about idioms, and since my last two videos, or last three videos, was about the Alpha and the Omega not being Christ, that Christ is not the Alpha and the Omega, yeah, I really did a... God really helped me to make those videos, because I did them ASAP, one after the other. Um, and he helped me get all the details together. But since I'm on the topic of idioms, God calls himself the Alpha and the Omega, but understand that in Greek, this is an idiom, idiom. And what does that mean? It's an idiom meaning that you are forever. See, see the problem with, with taking idioms from or expressions from a different time period and taking it literally in a different time period, right? It's raining cats and dogs. He's a man that likes to beat around the bush. Cut me some slack. You know, these are idioms. They don't mean what they say. But it gets the point across. It's raining cats and dogs. It's, 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 it's raining heavy out there. 
without father or mother, without beginning of days, without genealogy, oh, no written birth record. And then today we take it literally, oh, the man was without father and mother. He was without beginning of days. He was a high priest. He was a high priest and he wasn't from the descendant of Abraham. Oh, he must have been from heaven. <laughs> nah, they will be laughing at us from that time period. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Why would God say that about himself when God has no beginning and has no end? He says himself that he has no beginning and he has no end. And yet in Revelation, he says he's the beginning and the end. So one day God is going to end. And one day in the past, he was the beginning. <laughs> no, he's the Alpha and Omega, idiomatic expression. He's forever. And like I make mention in my other videos, Christ had a beginning. In the beginning was the... Christ had a beginning. Genesis 1.1 The earth had a beginning. The devil was a manslayer in the beginning. He literally began to be a manslayer at one point in the past. But if you're the Alpha and the Omega, beginning and end, beginning and end that's not literalism. That's, idiom, that's being idiomatic. In John 1.1 1, 1, In the beginning was the word. Proverbs 8 verse something Wisdom was the beginning of God's creations. Obviously, this is talking about Christ because Christ is called by Paul as the wisdom of God. And we know that Christ is the word of God. And then it says that the word of God had a beginning. And the word was a God. I prove this. So in the beginning, God has no beginning. So in the beginning was the word. That would be blasphemous if it really is, if you apply that to God. In the beginning was the word. In Proverbs 8, in the beginning was wisdom because God says wisdom was the very first thing that was made. Now, if wisdom is literally God's own wisdom, what? Wisdom was the first thing that God created. If God didn't create wisdom, he would have lacked wisdom, so he had to create it. And wisdom was the beginning of God's achievements, the, the, the beginning of his works of long ago. No. If Christ is the wisdom of God, if he's the word of God and is saying in both situations that he had a beginning, then he had a beginning. Just as much as the earth had a beginning, the devil was literally a manslayer in the beginning. Yeah, okay, peace.